Hey, good morning everyone and welcome to ShortSalePowerHour.com. If you could only see the beautiful face behind the camera that I was looking at there at the start, you too would be smiling. Hey buddy. How's it going? Hey, my name's Fred Weaver. This is my partner Kevin Kaufman. We're with Group 4610, Arizona's premier short sale team, and you're watching ShortSalePowerHour.com. Is that what this is? Yeah. So hey, a lot of folks really enjoyed our video yesterday. I know that because, well, it was great. Well, because we just got done... Uh, talking about it. And yeah, it well, and I'm dressed in the same clothes as I was yesterday. Right. So they are, I mean, it's just funny when I say that, like, like we got, like, great response and it's never even aired yet. I just think that's funny. But we know that the content was unbelievable. The content was great. I got excited. I know. Okay. So understand, guys, this oh, concept of post day 30, what happens in your short sale file after your package is verified, after a phase one or the beginning coordinators assign, and after a BPO is done. Right. That's what we covered yesterday. And, well, we didn't cover it. We touched on it. Well, we discuss, so, we discussed some theory about it. So let's like let's pull out another topic out of post day thirty because there's a lot of content here. We cover a lot of this in our classes. So Florida, we're coming at you. We're actually in Miami today, and we're in. Well, technically we're in Pembroke Pines, but it's close to Miami. It's well, like a it's like less than a thirty minute drive. It's like Miami. That'd be like saying I'm in Glendale or Mesa and I'm not in Phoenix. But you wouldn't be in Phoenix. Whatever, you literal people. Anyway. So the idea is Sorry, sir. My we're in Florida, check out our events page. So hey, Kevin, let's talk for a moment on something we can actually agree on. Okay. Writing an effective escalation email. Well, that is definitely something we can agree on. Did you like on. that transition? Absolutely. That was good, we're huh? We're certainly not going to agree on baseball, basketball, or football. Well, no, because you have horrible teams that you like. Uh, yeah, okay. Championships yeah. is all I You've have You've lived say. in Yuma, Arizona your whole life where there not are my no whole sports life. teams, and so you picked like the worst I've of the lived, worst. I've lived in Phoenix for 12 years. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. The the camera's rolling right now. How many championships do you, the Lakers Do you have? want to talk about escalation emails? I, I think we're escalating right now <laughs> to a whole new place. Okay, so, all uh, right, back to reality. First of all, we all know the Lakers are better than the Suns. Okay, great. Oh, I'm um, not even having that conversation. 15 championships. Now, the, short sale escalations. Yeah, do you want to talk about the Raiders? No, we're awful. Okay, It's been you. a tough couple years. It's been a tough run. It's been a tough couple decades. No, come to we're in the we're in the Super Okay, Bowl. escalation email. So here guys, here's something to understand. Want you to get the concept when you're working with a negotiator inside a bank and you don't have their email address, um, start using the internet by searching their name, searching for websites like jigsaw.com. Wow, right. that was a good hint. Well, and we don't have to go into jigsaw too much, but jigsaw.com, that's a great place to start. It's a great place to start. There are ways to find out who your coordinator's emails are, and I'm gonna suggest that bank communication happens at the email level, meaning that you're more likely oh, to be able to talk to most of your coordinators and supervisors and people on a file via email than you are picking the phone up. Because at the end of the day, they've got hundreds of files and it takes a lot longer to check their voicemail, write down the message and call people back and than it does to read an email. Absolutely. Now having said that, they get more emails than they could possibly read as well. Well, yeah. So let's talk about some tips, some so tips, not all of them. Here's a thought then, if I'm one of many, I might want to stand out. How would I stand out by writing an okay, email? Okay, so if I'm going to be writing an email... And not even an escalation email, let's no, just talk general email. General email, I want to I want to follow some sort of form or method... Format. Of, format Can we say of format? writing an email. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're a Lakers fan. I yeah. know form and format almost seem the same, but they're not. No, so, a format is the name of one of my favorite bands ever. So a format would be like in the subject line, I'll always write loan number, LN, the number sign, the actual loan number, space, parentheses, borrower's last name, comma, space, right. property address, end of parentheses. Correct. If you didn't get that, just you know, you could just go back and watch the standard. But the idea is I'm gonna be standard in, in my format every time. This is the loan number, this is the property address and the borrower's name, thinking that one of those may spark their attention, they'll start to get used to those things. Yes. Now the body of the email is very important because some of you write frustrated emails. How do I know that? I've done them before too. Been there a time or two. And you tell these really long stories about how horrible your experience has been, etc. And that's great, but it's not effective. I'm going to recommend though that if you are receiving several hundred emails a day, some of you may be, but some of you may also be smarter than some of the people you're sending the emails to or more have more time to spend on email, let me say it that way. Wow. Then okay. you actually could read all your emails, but most of the bank employees you're working with, I'm not, I'm not saying they're not smart, they have so much work they couldn't possibly read all your emails. So stand out, be format, that's number one. So if I just gave you what we put in 
the subject line yeah. of our emails and every the, single time. The second tip there is don't write a long book or a story. No, in fact, what you want to do is you want to be straight to the point. Something that we've talked about before on Short Sale Power Hour is that, that short sales, you guys, are about mitigation. They're about numbers. They're about saving the bank money. Mm -hmm. So if we know that, then why would I even bother having my emails about all the other stuff that goes on in a short sale? Well, I'm not going to write about how many times I was hung up on. No. I want to write about you know, how many times I had to verify my short sale package or how many times I had to fax it. None of that stuff actually matters to getting anything else done. Short, brief, to the point. What do you want to say? What are you looking for? Right. Are you looking to find out if the BPO came back? Are you looking to see when the file is going to be submitted? Ask a question to elicit an answer back oh, from yeah, them. Yeah, that's the question. That's but the, that's ask the open ended, ended questions, questions, not like, did you get this, yes or no? no. Like, ask something that requires some thought because you want them to respond back and give you some substance. But understand, guys, if they have that many emails, several hundred a day, you're not gonna get a long book back from them. So don't no. ask like nine questions and expect them to answer it. You're better off asking one or two questions per email. Yeah, one or two pointed questions that require a thoughtful response. Absolutely. And in a formatted way. I mean, it's pretty yeah. simple. If you can just follow for, a those. Form, a form way. I said formatted. Well, I know you switched over. You were at form earlier in the episode. so No, actually, that, that's a word you created while I was talking because you wanted me to say that. <laughs> we're in rare form. Are we today, really guys? having this conversation? We're really having this conversation again. Man, I'm just yeah, thinking. You want to talk like, about the Dodgers? Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. Are they going to end up at the top of the uh, NL West this year? Okay, right now they're in the bottom, I believe. And that's okay. Okay. That's All why right. they play 162 games. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, back to back where, to short Where sales. are the Diamondbacks, just out of curiosity? Uh, right above the Dodgers, I'm pretty right, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, except the Diamondbacks may not actually get get any higher. Okay. I'm just saying. The camera's There's rolling. There's a ton more talent in LA. Okay, so format in the subject line, brief description of what you're trying to accomplish in, the, in the subject. And pointed. And pointed. Ask questions to elicit a response. And then I'm going to give you the key of all keys right here. Include a read receipt in your email. If you don't know what a read receipt is, you need to go do some homework, but if you're using a standard Microsoft Outlook program, a read receipt allows the receiver of the email to click yes or no, I received this email, and the majority of the time your negotiators will click yes. That will be your confirmation that they got your email, so if you don't get a response, you can reply back to the read receipt and say, thanks so much for re reading my email, now can I get a response to these questions? Yeah. Or you could do like the Fred Weaver, which is for the read receipt Just to the supervisor, the and say your, your employee's been so nice to read my last two emails, but they haven't they responded haven't. to me in four days. Um, I need some help on this file. That's certainly one of your favorite favorite. One techniques. of my favorite techniques. Why not? Works really it well. It works every time. Okay. I'm going to let you wrap it up. Cool. Why don't you tell them about the best episode ever that we're going to do next week? Or tomorrow. Excuse me. Yeah. So Tomorrow's episode. You guys. You got Forgettable come, Friday. You got to come back This one's unforgettable. For uh, forgettable, unforgettable Friday, whatever you want to call it. You're going to love it. Um, we've actually got a real life situation we're going to share with you. This could have gone, this story could have gone another direction, but the executives at this particular bank that we were dealing with decided to do the right thing and I'm going to commend them for it. That's right. You're going to hear me tomorrow on shortsalepowerhour.com commending an executive for doing their job appropriately and swiftly. Absolutely. Come back, watch it. You'll have to see it yourself to believe it. Um, today's Thursday, right? It is. We're in Florida again and still, I should say. Tomorrow, we're in Jacksonville. So Jacksonville agents, come out and see us live. It's your favorite video blog live and in person. Woo! For eight hours of training. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up just like we always do. One, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Crush it. Dodgers still suck. <laughs>